So you're finally putting together the final puzzle pieces that make up your music release. But what about the cover art? Can we really say it's worthy enough to get Anthony Fantano's praise? I mean, maybe, it depends, you have to go and give it a look. I'm gonna show you guys how to take your release to the very next level with expert level cover arts. And it's more important than you might think when it comes to success of a track. And I'm gonna show you exactly how in this video. Let's get into it, guys. Now, what exactly does a cover art mean? Obviously, a cover art is just the piece of square photo that you see anytime you look at a photo on Apple Music or Spotify. But it's actually more than just that. Your cover art prepares your listener for the full audio experience. Just like a podcast, you gotta have a really good image. Just like a song, you gotta have a really good cover art. It's all in the name of the game of marketing and putting your brand piece together in a nice and concise way. Now, another thing to think about, and this is really exciting, because if you're listening to this, you should get excited because if this can happen for big artists, then you know it can happen to you. Of course, on a smaller scale, but the main concept is all there because Travis Scott, he released two years ago, we all remember the critically acclaimed album Astroworld. Astroworld was ranked the highest grossing album in that time frame, and why is that? Sure, it's because a lot of people streamed it, but at the same time, he was butting heads with Nicki Minaj. The one thing that set him apart was his merch sales. The Astroworld merch was one of the biggest merch blowouts in hip hop history. I mean, you've probably seen one or two people wearing this Astroworld hoodie or this Astroworld t-shirt. The cool thing is the cover art is what set the theme for all the merch to even become a thing. So with that new cover art being put out, it allowed him to have this huge campaign and ultimately come in for number one with the dub. Don't half-ass this because you're just half-assing yourself. I mean, I don't care if you get half-assed, but you definitely should. I'm a full ass up a guy, ass squared. Once your song finally blows up, your fans are dying to finally get their hands on any kind of merch towards their favorite project. Even think about yourself and think about anybody that collects vinyls. It's not about the listening of the vinyls, it's about having memorabilia and merchandise that reflects a project that they truly care about. And if somebody really cares about your music, your true fan, they're gonna want the same thing from you. That being said, no matter how diehard a fan is, if the cover art is just simply a crappy one, they're not gonna buy no vinyls, no CDs, and God forbid any merch. They're not gonna go wear around in public. Imagine wearing a piece of garbage in public. That being said, make sure the cover art is amazing for the merchandise aspect. But even more than that, there's also other benefits to having really good cover arts. So let's dive deep into this topic, guys, shall we? You must carefully ask yourself these main principal questions when it comes to your cover art. And these questions are, is my cover art up to standard? By that means, look at the top rated artists like Drake, Kanye West, Travis Scott, and your cover art. If yours can't sit eye to eye with these and actually be good, then you know you gotta put some more work to really get up to that level. Another question is, is it good enough to be hung on wall posters? I mean, heck, imagine you bring a girl up to your room and she sees this cover art versus if she sees this cover art. It's a totally different vibe. And if you want your fans to put posters of your cover arts on their walls, then God forbid, it's a horrible one. It gotta be amazing. Now, this is the base fundamentals between good and bad cover arts. Cause it can get really blurry when I say things like, what's a good cover art, what's a bad one? Because let's be honest, good and bad are hella subjective terms. What's good to me probably isn't good to you. Like music, when people think little baby's bad, I think he's good. People think gun is bad, I think he needs to lose weight. At the end of the day, it's all about perspective. But that being said, there are some base fundamentals aside from gonna and needing to go on a diet that we need to look in order to find music success, such as how to get the cover art perfect on a design standpoint. No worries, I got you covered and I'm gonna dig deep in this topic exactly. So you don't have to do too much thinking about how am I gonna get this right. I'm gonna give you also solutions on how to get cover art for relatively cheap prices. That way your release can go even further. Now here are the good principles regarding a good cover art. All good cover arts have these main things, such as it relates to the musical content. Nothing is worse than having a cover art of some big booty girl, and then it's gonna be Christian church music. There's just a disconnect and it doesn't really make much sense, unless you're going to some sort of cult church. In that case, give me the number, I wanna join. It's all about making it one musical piece because nobody wants to click on something and be clickbaited. Like imagine if I clickbaited you in this video. And if I did, I'm sorry. <laughs> Another aspect, it must be high quality. The recommended pixel resolution I say you should use is 3000 by 3000 pixels. Why? Because this allows DistroKid, TuneCore, CD Baby, whatever distributor you're using to put your music out to place it with the highest possible resolution because they're gonna be seeing your cover art in many different screens and display sizes. So the higher you go, the better. Trust me, 
144 pixel cover art isn't gonna cut it in this day and age. In fact, it wouldn't even cut it in our grandparents' day and age. So make sure you get some damn good quality. Also, make sure that the image you use is a square image. By that I mean, it's gonna be the same length and same width dimension. You don't wanna be sending a selfie like you took in the mirror and then try to send that kind of resolution. You don't wanna send wallpaper resolution and God forbid, portrait resolution. It's just not gonna work out because it's gonna be it's gonna be forced to be square, so it's gonna cut out a lot of the image anyway. Just prepare for it and then make the design square already. One thing that's very important is that it needs to fit your brand image. If you have a certain kind of hood image, then make sure it fits a hood image. If you have an R&B lover boy type image, make sure it fits that. If you had a sad emo image, make sure that the cover art fits that. Remember, you want it to connect to the listener because what matters most is a listener's experience. They're the ones who are buying your tracks. Make sure there's a very good attention to detail. A lot of common mistakes, like putting accidental brush strokes or accidentally erasing some parts, these are amateur mistakes and quite frankly are not acceptable. Your designer, or you in this case, or perhaps the other third option I'm gonna tell you about when it comes to creating your cover arts are gonna make sure that they can get this part covered. All exceptional cover arts evokes a strong emotion in the person that checks it out. And emotion doesn't have to mean you're sad and you're wailing all the time. There are many different kinds of emotion. There's happiness, sadness, frustration, anger, excitement. Honestly, there's a whole spectrum. And each album cover reflects that. Look at 50 Cent's Get Rich or Die Trying, or look at Kanye West's College Dropout. It each conveys a different emotion. And that emotionality is what makes the music memorable. So if your music is gonna have a high emotional appeal, the cover is gonna keep people coming back and back to it, and so they remember it. Remember, people don't remember how it sounded, rather, they remember how it made them feel. And that goes the same for your cover arts. But don't get this twisted, I'm not telling you to go full emo and becomes a certified lover boy, hashtag Drake. What I am telling you is make sure that it conveys at least one layer of emotion. They won't remember it any other way. Remember this, good cover art highlights the project, not the artist. Never, ever, ever get this twisted. Because a cover art is a one-time use thing. You're not gonna use one cover art for 10 different projects, but you can have one brand theme in each cover art of every project. I'm gonna to touch on that more, but remember this, the cover art's supposed to make the project as perfect as possible because people are gonna be buying the product, right? So when they stream it, they're gonna to wanna to have a completely good product. An example of the progression is, look at ASAP Rocky. In 2011, 2013, and 2015, he released these three album covers. Now tell me, why do they all look so familiar? Hmm. As you can tell, he's very intentional in setting a certain theme and emotion in his music, and it reflects the actual songs itself. So when you see that and relate it back to yourself, make sure that you keep it thematic and your music brand gets shown. Make sure there's an essence of consistency. Kanye West did the same thing, and so did The Weeknd. Because if it's not consistent, then people aren't gonna know what to expect when they come into it. Come on, man, you really gotta be serving your fans. Really let them know that you're gonna be there for them no matter what. If you're not consistent, you're actually doing your fans a disservice. And who knows, they may not become fans in the future. Now here are some things you really gotta look out for. I know art is not meant to be limited, but that being said, if you wanna be able to sell it, there are some parameters you gotta watch out for. Try to keep the amount of guns you put on it very limited. Though if it's a really nice designed photo of a artistic gun, it's different than just pointing a rifle at the screen and using that as your cover art. The reason I say this is because DistroKid or some big distributors won't allow that. And if it's overly explicit, it's gonna be hard to sell, especially to a younger audience. Remember, the more general you keep it and the less explicit, the better, because the more people that can actually enjoy it. So whenever people come to us and ask, hey, Boost Collective, can you make me a cover art? We say sure, because that's one of our services. We always make sure that we cover every single aspect because it's important that each and every one is covered with the highest of levels. The music industry is getting bigger and bigger. It's getting more competitive every damn day. The rewards are getting huge, but so is the competition. So sometimes having a little bit of a professional helping you, like myself, is gonna help keep you above the edge and give you the amazing bigger growth in your fan base, your streams, and overall career. So if you're one of those artists that think you may benefit from us helping you, then check our link in bio and we're gonna show you how we can help you with all your cover art needs. But more than that, I just want you to understand the base fundamentals because guys, you know, we really want the industry to have higher quality of standards when it comes to this type of stuff. And now you have it. So make sure you check our next couple of videos because we have a bunch of really nice stuff showing you how to market your music, promote it, build your fan base, and more. So make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. See you guys, until next time.